these tools and add to their bottom line. Also, if you face barriers to good employment, our Strive NOLA program with partners like Job One, Goodwill, TCA, and Urban League provides career readiness training across the city and is transforming right. lives. The New Orleans Business Alliance is committed to creating more and seats and funding up the table for here. individuals and entrepreneurs. Learn more about economic development reimagined. Our talent and workforce Lots development, to talk about strategic today. neighborhood development, and small Tune business in. growth programs work for everyone. Visit our website at nolaba.org. That's nolaba.org. All right, all right, good evening, family, and welcome to True Love Movement Tuesdays. All right, all right, good evening, family, welcome to True Love Movement Tuesdays. This is your host, Brother Shay. And Mama Baya. And we would like to welcome everyone here this nice, cool, breezy um, Tuesday, December 17th, 2019, here in New Orleans. Hey, Yami. So. Hello. And so we'd like to welcome everyone. We know there's so many things happening here in the city of New Orleans and then elsewhere. There's so many things that you all could be doing. Uh, but we are honored that you have chosen to spend this time with us. And uh, we realize, too, this is the time where folks are picking up children from school and uh, the commute, end of the day commute is happening. And, you know, we got, we got children of our own. <laughs> Right here, right here live now with you. Shout out to our Facebook Live uh, family. Uh, joining us simply like True Love Movement on uh, Facebook. And you can join us here live in the studio. Shout out to uh, Tracy Elizabeth and our good brother Fahamu Dennis. Right on. Good to see you, brother. And, and everybody who will be uh, joining us. Simply, sh you can share this with people who, uh, who you respect and folks you think can dig this. It's been a little while since we've been on live for a number of reasons, traveling and scheduling being most of those, but it's, it's good to be back uh, and back live uh, here in the studio. And uh, of course, we got Yami, as she was with us last time. And she's not feeling too good today, family, so she's going to need perhaps a little bit of uh, extra, uh, extra attention, extra care. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the weather change, man. It's like, ooh, it was nice and warm yesterday. That's right. And then, and then what? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to everybody who might be struggling with a little cold or something like that. Just keep it high and take care. Take care of you. That's right. The weather is, uh, is a changing. Yeah, you're right. Yesterday, I think it was in the 70s, like mm -hmm. the mid-70s yesterday. And then overnight... It's chilly out there. It dropped, and there's a lot of wind and, and what have you. So we know this is the time of, of the year when uh, sometimes that immune system ain't cooperating too good with us. So, yeah, do what you need to do. And, and again, shout out to everybody joining us everywhere. You can, of course, catch us here on uh, the, your AM dial 1230, but also at www.wbok1230m.com uh, on the web as well as the WBOK 1230 AM app in the Google Play as well as in the App Store. So many ways to connect. And again, shout out to our Facebook Live family. Simply 
like True Love Movement on Facebook and you can join us here live in the studio. And I'm going to do uh, my best to stay in real time and respond to your comments uh, as they come up. Uh, someone said, Tracy Elizabeth said, my joints are hurting. Mm, feel better, <laughs> sister. Could. I know, man. This, yeah. this weather ain't no joke on any kind of bone, any kind of, it don't, it don't like the cold, it don't like the breeze. So you hang in there, get your heating pad or hot blanket or whatever you need to do to take care of yourself this time. Mm -hmm. So what's happening, Mama Fire? Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of changes. A lot of changes are happening, and um, you know, gearing up for a settle down. Um, you know, settling down for maybe a, the last week of mm -hmm. um, twenty nineteen, and and gearing up for the first week in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty is so close, family. <laughs> so close. So close. We know this is the time of the year where um, often. You know, we spend time in reflection about the previous year and in preparation and anticipation for the following year. Uh, this is the time where the the resolutions come up and the um, the vision boards, you know, start getting put together and what have you. And so, you know, this is an important time as one as one year is ending and another one is uh, is beginning. And so. Um, Again, we've been off. We haven't been live in so long, huh? Been a while. It's been a while. There was uh, I was traveling and I was in the airport and a, a sister said, "You know, brother Shaq, I just heard you on the radio." I said, "Well, I'm glad you, you're listening. It wasn't me though. It was it wasn't a live show." And so, shout out to WBOK 12:30 m for rebroadcasting. Excuse me. You know, the True Love Movement, uh, True Love Movement shows, True Love Movement Tuesday, True Love Movement Hour shows. You know, it was we we just celebrated uh, six years right at the uh, beginning of November. Six years with WBOK, uh, with True Love Movement, and and we're also uh, anticipating what will happen next in 2020. Is new programming and perhaps a new uh, slot day and time is is happening. Wait, awaiting final details on that to to let you know what's going to go on with that. But we we give thanks for all of our our listeners uh, and viewers, you know, over the years that have, uh, you know, listened and shared the show and contributed very, very richly. And so we want to welcome you back. And if this is your first time tuning in, we, we thank you for tuning in. And again, we, as the Facebook Live queue is building, we can share this live show with folks. You can start a watch party, too. I found that's a pretty efficient way to do it. You can start a watch party. And get some folks to, to join it because we have a we have a lot of well, not a lot of but we do have some important at least we think important uh, announcements and things to talk about on this particular show as we're nearing the end of 2019 and embarking upon a, a, a very ambitious uh, 2020. Yes, and focused. Focused. Yes, that's right. Focused uh, and ambitious 2020. 2020 vision. Tracy Elizabeth said, and a, a new decade. So there's a lot of there's a lot of new uh, that's happening. And so, without any further ado, we should stay. I think we should start off saying that um, maybe about True Love Movement in terms of this has really been a, a busy year and a year of of, um, of change and transition for True Love Movement. Yes. You know, as many of you know, we we made adjustments as it relates to um, to how we're how we're doing the work you know and oh shout out to to uh, uh, Sister Greer and to Kramer yes. this past Saturday you had um, conceptualized this idea of responding to our people who were dealing with who we know are dealing with grief um, you know we're we're not just dealing with grief, of course, in the holiday season. We're dealing with grief on the regular and daily. And sometimes we're not as clear about how how that grief is impacting us and our ability to, to you know, be around and be amongst people. And so, you know, shout out to you, Mama Fire, for, you know, conceptualizing that and then pulling that together and, and giving people an opportunity to talk for real, for real, about grief and the impact grief has had and is having on them so that people can know that they're not alone, you know, that there's nothing 
stranger out about, you know, being confronted with the truth of grief, the truth of the loss, and just how, just how that's uh, affecting, you know, day-to-day, day-to-day lives. And the, the courageous people, the brave souls that, that did come out and, you know, we ate good food. You know, everybody brought a dish and, and uh, it was cooked with love. And, you know, we broke bread together as we talked about, you know, how grief and loss were affecting us in, in the holiday season. And we were, you know, very frank about the fact that not everyone, uh, you know, is, is participating in uh, the holidays, you know, in the mainstream holidays. But so many, so many people are that the energy is so high that there's no way around it. So whether you're, you know, directly participating or actively participating, you're still indirectly and passively participating because it's just really guiding, you know, how people gather and how people do things. So we acknowledge that. And again, shout out to all of our people who came out and cooked the dish and we ate good and broke some bread together on this past Saturday as part of our work with uh, Sister Greer and Tecrema Center, Tecrema Agriculture uh, Center over in that lower nine. And that was on Saturday. Hey, hey. And so, as Mama Fire is, is, is soothing, soothing the Yami, if you, you all can hear, if you remember uh, being, uh, you know, not feeling your best, you know, I remember, you know, like, how, how good it was. It was actually my grandmother who was the one who, who was the one who, who really soothed me, and, and I had that, that kind of gentle, loving relationship with it was my grandmother who incidentally today is her her born day so so you know rising power dorothy love my grandmother you know my favorite sagittarius as today is her born day she's been an ancestor since um, um august 26th right before uh, hurricane katrina she was the reason that i got here to get my mother who is now also an ancestor out of uh, harm's way for hurricane katrina so Shout out to Dorothy Love, Rising Power. Rising Power Queen. You know, um, so yeah, as I was just saying how I remember being soothed like that, and, and many of us have had experience of being soothed when we weren't feeling well, and that, you know, you mm-hmm. were doing that, you were taking care of the album. Yes, and so, you know, I might be in and out a little bit, but I'm thankful for this time. Thankful for WBOK 1230 AM right for, for having a... a platform for us to be able to to talk about true love movement in this way in a very right. intimate way We're getting ready to share some intimate details about true love movement and and in the transitions that have happened um you know that have been been happening for some time now that's right that's right and so so first as it as it relates to true love movement as i was saying right before you you walked out as you know we've we've not we don't really in this particular moment are operating from a physical space. Yes. And so the work is, is, is ongoing, but it's, you know, it's mobile and what have you. And, and that's been a, a bit of an adjustment and it has had an impact on, you know, perhaps the volume of, of folk we've been able to work with, but that's, you know, that's part of it. Mm-hmm. That's just part of the, uh, the change, <clears throat> you know, and the universe is leading that because we did not, um, we certainly didn't opt out of it. As a matter of fact, we tried very, very hard uh, to to keep that going, but it was bigger uh, than simply what we were able to do to sustain it. Yes. And so, you know, for those of you who do know, uh, we have, you know, been mobile and continue to be mobile, you know, for some time on the True Love Movement front. Now, <clears throat> on the, excuse me, and, and again, that's, that, ha- that has happened, you know, kind of over the course of the year. And also, while that was happening over the course of the year, um, we were also, if you remember back in, was that September? We did a show in, I want to say it was either 
September or October. And I think it may be the last show on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't liked and subscribed to uh, True Love Movement YouTube channel, please do that. But we did a show right here, live on a Tuesday, called uh, The Art of Letting Go. And it was, uh, like, I think relationships, I don't know, 5.0, 6.0 maybe? Because we had done relationship shows, you know, throughout the year. And people seem to really like those relationship shows. Seem like they want more relationship shows than anything. Yeah. 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 And, and, and so even though we've always been, and I guess me probably more than anything, been reluctant to do the, the relationship shows, um, you know, we did that one. Uh, again, and again, every time we do them, uh, they always, they're always well responded to. Because most of the things I guess people uh, want to work with, you know, I can speak at least for the, the brothers I work with, Mount Fire, is around relationships. Mm. And not just intimate partner relationships, though that is, I would say that's maybe 90%. It's sometimes relationships with their mamas or family or what have you, or children even. Um, so yeah, relationships is a big thing. As, and so we did that show kind of foreshadowing something that we had been working on for, for really, I guess, the, the, the maybe indirectly or passively, but at least the whole 2019. Definitely. Um, you know, more in a more concentrated w way, though, you know, even before 2019, uh, we, we understood that there was, there was definitely a, a, an expiration date. And part of the... Uh, Part of the challenge, and in, in even in the elongation of it, is the um, is true love movement and the the perception of true love movement and the relationship or relational aspect of true love movement. Um, for for some for some there is some perception, and I don't know what to what degree because you just really don't know these things. But there is there was is and has been some perception that true love movement is really just about. Uh, us being a couple and, yes. and finding true love and that's really the, the center of, of what true love movement is. Now the thing is, we've never said that. As a matter of fact, we've said quite the, the not the opposite, but we've expanded and been very specific that it wasn't that. As a matter of fact, it was the work on the true love movement work that brought us together as a couple. Right. And so there was some there was some misunderstanding that those things were one and the same. And you know, we talked, you know, casually about that, of course, not really being synonymous. <coughs> um, yes, okay. um, about those things not being, you know, synonymous, but still there's there's a perception and has been a perception. And so we recognize that. And even though we may know um, differently, we do recognize that sometimes part of that perception has to do with how people respond, which, you know, to what you were saying, there's people are very, very interested in relationships and relationship shows and relational topics and what have you. And so at any rate, um, we wanted to take an opportunity to say that those two things are in fact separate. And to go further and to be a little more explicit, what we are saying is that we are no longer a couple. Again, we're saying that we are not a, a, a an intimate partner couple. Now, we do still work and do partner with True Love Movement because that's what brought us together to begin with. And that's really what True Love Movement has been. And let me, and let me say, you know, I brought us together with True Love Movement. So, you know, not trying to be very particular, but we didn't grow True Love Movement together. I grew True Love Movement and offered it to you to support the, the brothers and the men and boys, the black men and boys. So that is, that is correct. For history's sake, True Love Movement was actually a viable LLC business before I even offered Brother Shaq the ability to come on as someone who would support black men and boys. When I asked him to come on, me and Brother Shaq had no romantic relationship, no correct. romantic ties. We had been friends for a long time, and I knew the work that he would, had begun doing or had been doing in another state with black men and boys in mm -hmm. his community. And so when I found that information out, um, I reached out to him and asked him if he would be interested. And we started a conversation around how he would show up for True Love Movement. That's correct. And that was around 2011. Mm -hmm. And then... 2016, he was coming back. What, no, no 2011. 20, 2011. So that happened in May of 2011. By 20, by November of 2011, mm -hmm. he came back. 
to New Orleans and we started off this um, at the school that I was working at, mm -hmm. um, started off him being the director of men and boys programs. There was nothing romantic happening then. And then we decided um, to make it romantic um, because we obviously attracted to each other, obviously had some um, so many things in common and, mm -hmm. and, and wanted to give romantic love a try. That's right. And I'm so glad we did. Me I'm too. glad we did because we know now you know the thing the, who we really are in right. this way as as um business partners but also as intimate yes. partners right. um i don't regret what what we did i do regret the timing of it though mm -hmm. because um i had just gotten out of a relationship with my children's father mm -hmm. so um my second husband so i had just gotten out we like completely separated in divorced from him mm -hmm. and brother Shaq had also just gotten out of a serious marriage and divorce that is right and so now looking back on it as we're teaching people how to break up right you know we're we're not we're not only teaching people how to love each other and honor each other as romantic partners we're teaching people how to break up that's right in real you time know? yeah i mean sometimes it's okay it, sometimes breaking up is is what needs to happen for one or both of the, the people involved. That's right. Um, and and we are not ugly with each other. We're not no. mad at each other. We're not, you know, um, trying to hurt each other. That's We're right. not, you know, we are doing it. We, we are breaking up the most emotionally intelligent, mm -hmm. the most kind and loving way. That's right. And so, yes, this is what true love movement looks like as far as, Breaking up is concerned, but let me let me say this: that we can never break up as far as the work. That's right. You know, we have taught each other so much about how mm -hmm. Black people learn to mm -hmm. be well. Mm -hmm. You know how Black people heal, and so we are we sharpen each other. We're good counterparts. We're good um, balancing. We, we balance each other. Mm -hmm. It just did not work um, fully on a romantic tip. And that's heartbreaking for people because what people did was put us up on a pedestal and said, oh, I want to love like y'all. I want, mm -hmm. black, you know, y'all black love uh, right. personified and y'all right. this and that. Right. But black, black love personified may be one thing, but, you know, we, we never asked for that. We right. never asked to be examples of black love. We never said, y'all, we are together and we are never going to break right. up. And, right. and, and everything is 100% perfect and this is how it's supposed to be and this sure. is where we're supposed to be. You know, we did express our love for each other very um, openly right. and very honestly. And that love is only shifting toward true love movement. That's it's right. not changed, you know. It's just shifting in the, the sites that it's always should have been. That's where it always that's should have right. been. And that, that's hard for people to understand, you know, that two people who seemed very much in love can not be in that space anymore but still be able to work together. That's right. And make a different choice. You know, um, I, uh, you know, I wanted to add to that and say that, uh, you know, the, the breaking up that, that you're describing is certainly a process. And you know, even on that show, we talked a little bit about the the, the process of, of breaking up. But I want to talk also too about the the result of just not being a couple. And I know those are things on a on a continuum, you know, for a process. But I'm I'm sharing that because you know you just you said you described it as you know it didn't work out. And I don't know that it didn't work out, at least the way that I see. I see that, that it, it, you know, it lasted as long as it lasted and it, you know, it did exactly what it should do and that it, it ran its course. And, you know what I'm saying? We just, we, it was no longer sustainable in that, in that context. And I think that's an important experience, you know, for me to have personally, but also an important experience to talk about because that, sometimes is really that happens you know that you know this is not you know my first go round you know it isn't yours no it's you know not third you know what I'm saying and third so, or more third or more and so and so there's a you know what's significant about that is and pardon us family we mama five is still tending to yeah I mean part of what's part of what's uh what's relevant about that is 
when 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 you do something for so long, it's almost as though sometimes sometimes if you're not careful, you, you can trick yourself and unwittingly trick other people or, or what have you into thinking that you've never done anything. This this is all you've ever done. Yeah. And that simply isn't true. You know, that's the other part of it. It's not that this is the first and only and thing that we've ever done like this. And so what I, I know for true about me is that every relationship that I've ever been a part of, particularly long relationships, what got me to this one is that they all had an expiration date. They all ended. They didn't all last forever. And, you know, again, looking at it through the lens of, you know, it didn't work out or, or I don't know that it didn't work out. I think, you know, again, the way I see it is that it did work for as long as it was intended to. You know, we have to have a lot of trust that um, things happen the, the way that they're supposed to. And that's across the board, you know. And so this is true love movement. And so, we, you know, we're dealing squarely with the truth. Yes. You know, this is the truth in that it is, you know, relative but okay that it, it, it is, you know, and to hate to say it, it is what it is. But that's not where the defeatist attitude is just that sometimes... You know, when you when you know you mentioned about things that we were getting out of as we got together, those that time and those processes was in terms of what perhaps should have happened, needed to happen for us individually during those times was so significant that even though it took, you know, eight, nine, you know, years or so to get back to we're essentially back to where we were when we picked up yes you know and, and I want to I want to draw attention to that because that is the might the might of the the universal truth in showing in teaching us all lessons that your lesson may be right in front of you and something about you may not want that lesson at this time and so what you can do is you can make a choice to put off that lesson but I can tell you from, you know, real-time experience and just general life and lived experience that, you know, it'll come, it comes back. Like, you continue to get the lesson until you get the lesson. And I don't regret, you know, the choice that I've made because, again, that choice had to be made in that way uh, for us to, to get here and be here and to be able to do this in this way and to be able to talk about it you know, you know, in real time, and you know, as Mama Fire is uh, again consoling Iame, and I still want y'all to to just think about how remarkable that is. That even in the middle of having a what for most people would be a very very private conversation, that they would not have on the air, or the radio waves, or on the Facebook Live, in the process of having that conversation. Mama Fai is still consoling a sick child other than her own child, you know, and, and that is exactly what that baby, Iyame, needs in this moment, and it's another testament to we are exactly where we need to be. Even though it may look strange to others and sometimes to ourselves, the ways in which and the process by which it happens, it might look a little bit funky, but it's really going the way that it's supposed to go, and we do as we as we become mature in terms of spiritual maturity have to be able to trust that it, what's happening as it's happening is exactly what should be happening in that moment contrary to how it may look to the outside world or even to our inside world on how it you know may shift things for the way that our inside world looks or our um our norm or our normal you know, day to day, we do have to trust that, you know, things things will be as they are and that, that, that they're really okay. But I don't want to, um, I definitely don't want to speak for and, and uh, you know, I'm not in a position to speak for Mama Fire, so I will definitely encourage her to, to add to that and add her, her perspective when she's able to return. Um, because this is a this again is an important subject. Uh, of course, it could be considered, and we will say 
uh, a sensitive and, and a careful subject, but it's important because, you know, there's so much of what we have done and what we do uh, that's very public. And it's not that we really want to, at least I can say, I would, in a, a different set of circumstances, I would much rather have not, uh, you know, had this done in a very public way this way. Uh, but the, again, the universe presented that, and we know most of you all who are listening or folks who are watching who have been, you know, in relationships and have in relationships have ended. Um, you haven't done it on air or had to do it on air or talk about it on air. It's been a very, you know, private sort of thing. So for whatever the reason, and we have some sense about the reason the universe brought us this in this way uh, to do it. And so we're going to do it justice and do it, you know, with integrity. Uh, and yeah. so I wanted to, again, remark about how how amazing, I don't know if you were, I don't know if the sound is on the, on the other side, but I was just saying, you know, Mahama Fai is still in the middle of having a very, what would normally be a private conversation, having it on the air, and see, seeing to and soothing, you know, a sick child, and to say how remarkable is that, how remarkable are you, and this is, you know, even though this is perhaps different in some ways, it's still very much so like any other Tuesday. And so we just wanted to, to honor you and uh, and draw attention to that. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Shaq. And yeah. two, thank you, you know, for, for your ability to um, to have this conversation as well, you know, because it's not easy. It's not easy, you know why? Because people validate true love movement based on the relationship. And I know it's true. Yeah. You know, I know it's true. It's romantic relationships and... Uh, intimate partner relationships uh -huh. is something our people look up to. Definitely. They look up to because it seems unattainable for black people. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like, you know, oh, this is the pinnacle of black love. But please know, when people are having relationships, it's difficult and it's tough. That's right. And what I couldn't do, speaking for myself, is I couldn't stay in the relationship just because we are, you know, people look up to us. That's right. I couldn't stay there because then it becomes fake and it, it's not the truth. It's not the truth anymore and and um you know and I I do better speaking on you know how to heal so that you can have lasting relationships and you can have you know really what you want. Right, that's right. so if that's a goal. Yeah, if that's if that's a goal and if right. that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Yama has got a lasting relationship. She's trying to make sure it's understood. And the truth of the matter is, Brother Shaq, we have a lasting relationship. Oh, absolutely. We have a lasting relationship. Absolutely. It just may not be romantic. Right, it doesn't, it can look different. And I think that's uh, that's what we're saying and we're announcing, you know, in a very formal way, you know, that, that yes, we still have a relationship. We still do true love movement together. We're just no longer a couple. And why that's important that I, I guess we make that clear is because, you know, you may... Uh, as you can imagine, you know, this is a, you know, in, in war, I can just say whether you can imagine or not. I think that you could imagine, but I will just state this is still, though we, we've been aware for some time, uh, it's still a little bit challenging, you know, emotionally for me, you know, I'm saying, uh, because it, it has, there is now a, a new normal uh, that isn't my old normal that had been my normal for a, a you know, a very, very long time, you know, and so that uh, there is an adjustment period that that has to happen, and then there's the the challenge of that adjustment period happening in a, in a you know, perhaps a public way, um, as opposed to, again, typically this is not a public conversation that's hap that, had, that is had on the airwaves. This happens in private, and there's, and there's some kind of a scandalous something or the other that happens in public, and you know, it don't have to be none of that. Um, and so, we, we again, we made a different choice that's consistent with, you know, true love movement and, and our individual and collective integrity to say, well, since so much is public, we'll say this, um, you know, we'll say this publicly as well because it is, in fact, the truth. But it isn't all doom and gloom. As a matter of fact, at least I'm saying and I'm seeing it is not at all in a, a doom and gloom kind of way because... 
you know, when when things again run their course, you know, there's so many great memories and so many things that we did collectively. You know, even as a couple, that you know, oh, I, I cherish those. You know, and and the growth, my own growth in the the time that we had that particular, uh, you know intimate partner relationship, that couple relationship, was tremendous. I learned a lot about myself, I learned a lot about you. Um, I've learned a lot about Yame too, because Yame has been a, a pretty, a, a regular now on the on True Love Movement Tuesdays when we do it live. Was she regular, she was regular at our house? She was regular at the house, yeah. I was, I was there when she came home from the hospital, so yeah, there's more history. There's lots of history. I guess one day we'll tell it all. Yeah. You know, because there's so much. But I would like, but, I would like maybe, you know, a time to talk about it. Maybe not so much on the air, just the ins and outs and the, the reasons why. Right. And, you know, the reasons why it couldn't work from my perspective and for your, from your perspective. Just right. as a deeper dive into breaking up. Sure. And, and what, why, you know, what are the reasons why people break up? And that over seven years, you know, talk about it and keep it high, thoughts in a new light mm -hmm. about seven year you know there's seven year um cycles cycles right? right seven years cycles and so you are you change and rebirth yourself every seven years mm -hmm. into a new person into a, a new understanding of yourself oh, yes, you know yes and and it happens it happened to me it, it happens yeah. you know and <laughs> it happened to you and and so the the bravery part is saying that you don't have to throw it all out. You know, right. you don't have to throw it out. You don't have to be ugly to each other. Right. You don't have to, you know, be vindictive or hurt each other or, or like right. get revenge on each other. You what know, is that? you you learn a lesson and you keep moving right. and you take what's good. That's you take right. you take what's good. You process what's bad or you process what didn't work and you keep moving. That's you know, right. true love movement works with 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 Brother Shaq and I. It Absolutely. works. It works um, because we are good. Um, we balance each other out, and the truth of the matter is, we work better this way. I think so. In my, I mean, there's no expectations. There's no pressure. That's right. You know, there's. It's just. It's it's true love movement. It's That's business. Right. It's it's um, healing. It's community work, and. I would like for people to kind of challenge their thoughts about why romantic relationships, and if you can maintain it, validates something. Damn, you know, like I got some theories on that too, though. Let's go. I got some. I definitely got some theories on on that. But before I get into that, I wanted to also continue the thought you were saying about, um, you know, the seven the cycles and the se seven year cycles. And as I was as I was saying the the. Um, or you, you know, the the it's run its course. It's like um, to to use a word or the phrase that you've been using. I know you used it all 2019, but I feel like you were talking about it pretty strong. The back half of 2018 about leveling up. Yes. And you know, I mean, yes, you you say it all the time, but I mean, I know you say that a whole lot about leveling up. And so I see what we are doing now and what we have done in effect as a leveling up like yeah. it's it's a leveling up in terms of the our our individual and personal and singular growth you know as people uh that could no longer be sustained in doing it as a as a as a, as a couple as an intimate partner couple but still that allows us to do the individual you know personal frees us up to do that kind of work because the reason why that's necessary is because, in all honesty, uh, and that's the only way this would come, that's what the universe has given us. Like, this really has run a very particular course. And I wanted to, I wanted to say that first and then tie it into the, what I was getting ready to say about my thoughts because, you know, as you're talking about the, the pressures and all the things that are involved in having a relationship, and then doing this kind of work together, family, I will tell you, that is a lot to do at the same time. Mm -hmm. It is a lot to be in a space where we are in a in an intimate partner relationship and doing this kind of work as intense as it is, and it doesn't really ever stop. 
because it isn't the conventional, you know, go to work for a little bit of time and you got like a work persona and then you get off and then this, this is this is never that. This is all in 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. And I'm not saying that there's a problem with that, but I'm acknowledging that that takes a toll. And it's, it is difficult when things are intertwined in the ways that they have been with us. And so I said all that to say from a, even from a, from a stamina perspective, that there is as ambitious as it has been, there is only so much that people can do, you know, individually and collectively before you just again, it's a it's a matter of stamina. And I, I'm I'm proud that we were able to uh sustain it, you know, for as long as we did at that rate, and I'm really excited uh that we get to continue on without the um the pressures and expectations of also maintaining the, the couple relationship. Uh, because though it had, uh, you know, really great and bright moments and really extended periods of time, very, very joyful. Again, the way that things were, were, were intertwined still is a big ask, you know, for anyone. And so I think that, you know, you're right and I appreciate, you know, again, willingness, suggestion, and you know, I think we had a consensus about that we had to to say this, you know, publicly uh, in a way uh, just because of, you know, whatever the optics, you know, could be going forward and, and the fact that it was true. And also so that, uh, at least for me, Mama Fai, I was, I was kind of delighted and relieved so that I don't have to keep telling the story, that I can refer someone to a video and say, yeah. listen, I talked all about it. You talked all about it. We talked all about it. I don't want to talk about it right now. You know what I'm saying? Yes. As a human being. Um, well, and to have that, I mean, like I said, if, if it's got to be this way, let's let it serve the need <laughs> that it should serve, you know, in terms of the, the radio and the, the airwaves in, in a very public way like this is what I mean. Yes, yes. I, I, you know, I do think that our work um, teaching our people um, mental mental health um, support and healing and all those things will be stronger because enhanced, we're yeah. yeah enhanced because we're definitely more focused. <sighs> that's right, oh baby, huh? See, this this also too in, in real time is is um is uh you know Mama Fai is tending to the Yami. You know, the uh, a hurting or an uncomfortable child takes precedence over, you know, over even something as, as serious as this. She's even more serious. And what needs to happen with her in the moment is even more serious. And and this is an example, too. And I, again, the fortitude that it, that it takes to do multiple things for real, for real, in your heart work all at one time, to have great care and concern about how we're talking about our uh, ourselves personally and our personal and, in, in, you know, somewhat private uh, situation of private life, and simultaneously, you know, actually do this work here in the moment of doing the show with Yami as a sick baby who definitely needs attention and to be able to maintain the mental and emotional focus to uh, sustain, you know, what we're doing here on the radio show and then also to give her what she needs and the fact that in partnership, which is what you're seeing, we're doing it as I'm continuing the conversation as things are getting a little more intense, you know, with the Yami. That's an example, you know, in real time, even with this particular subject on how it is that we work together and understand our individual abilities and contributions because um, I I couldn't do the part that she's doing right now and we're you know I couldn't do that so I'm glad that she's here and she's able to do that because um, and then for everybody who's listening and for everybody's watching this is real life and this is real time and we won't you know misrepresent that things fit very neatly always into these very comfortable and uh, convenient boxes of time that they happen when they happen, as they happen, 
and then still everybody will be all right. Yami won't be sick always. And, you know, tomorrow is, uh, I think tomorrow's Wednesday. It's going to be cool again. It's going to be, you know, whatever it is that people are doing is going to happen. And it'll keep on going. And I think being able to honor the present and do what needs to be done. Again, this is a skill we've cultivated over time. But it does require, uh, you know, fortitude. Because I, as I can imagine, there are people who are listening or watching or, or will see this and saying, man, I wouldn't. I couldn't have got up there and, and said none of that kind of stuff about my relationship. I mean, how many people would want to talk about their actual intimate partner relationships on, you know, the truth about them, you know, not the sanitized version, but the truth of them, you know, on camera or on the radio or, or what have you. How many people would really, really want to be able to do that authentically? You know, I don't think very many because there's often a lot of, um, there's a lot of shame in guilt in some of the things that we do uh, that we don't do publicly. And I'm, I'm grateful to be able to have had an experience in terms of this relationship where I can speak publicly about, you know, private, seemingly private things with integrity that isn't inconsistent with anything I've shown or we've shown publicly. So again, if it has to be this way in this you know, kind of forum or format, it, I'm, I'm honored that it is, in fact, that. Is she better? I think so. Okay, and see, look at that. And like that, boom, there she is. So I don't want nobody talking about what they can't do. <laughs> I don't want him. We don't want him. Nobody coming, sit out and saying, man, I can't do it. It's, it's, it's impossible. And, you know, I don't, we don't want to hear that because that's simply not the case. It's not, it's not. To say that it won't be challenging or difficult or downright hard or, or at moments even devastating, it's still doable. It's still doable. You're, now, yeah. you're not quite in the shot. She's in the shot. Okay. Well, I wanted to just kind of talk about marriage, you yeah. know, um, and uh, marriage, marriage itself <laughs> and like an alternative way that Brother Shaq, Brother Shaq and I utilized marriage and really my last two marriages my last two marriages were um anti-government <laughs> anti-contract anti and and that's tough right because there's a, a lot of people who um say that you're not married unless you've been married by the u.s government you're not married mm -hmm. unless you've been to a justice of the peace or something somebody that, else outside of you yes and so um you know, Brother Shaq and I had our own ceremony. That's right. Um, early on, 2013 or so, mm -hmm. when we decided that we would um, commit to each other and and decide to call each other our life partners That's right. and use the terminology wife and husband, which mm -hmm. um, we've learned has negative, actually Very. negative etymologies. Yes. And since then, I will never personally take on those names That's right. for myself or for any partner that I choose to have. Um, but so for the marriage that um, I had before this one, I've been married three times, one mm -hmm. time using go a government contract, That's right. um, which I'm a widow of that marriage. And mm -hmm. then the second marriage was done with a ceremony, a very public ceremony with our families. We actually signed the certificates but we did not turn the certificates into the U.S. Uh -huh. government. And then Brother Shaq and I, we had no one present but us That's as right. we had our ceremony together. And so it just shows the evolution of what marriage can look and be mm -hmm. like. You know, there's a there's a downfall, I guess, a quote-unquote downfall in that um, you can sever that. <laughs> it's easily severed. It's, right. easily, it's easy to say, you know what, this isn't quite working out. Um, for these reasons and it always helps let me say this ding 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 it always helps to frame the dis dissolution like, like to dissolve a relationship for you and not right. because of what the other person is doing that's right it's because of what you want what you think what you feel and it's not because of the other person because when we say I'm blaming you you don't do this right. and you don't do that right. and you don't do this then it's a very shallow reason to be married <laughs> a that's very right. shallow you know, uh, circumstance. And, and so framing everything like I've outgrown who I was. I, right. I've outgrown what 
relationships are. I've outgrown what, you know, what I thought I wanted um, in a very human, real way, um, mm -hmm. in a very loving way that says, you know, how can I help you through this? You know, how can we help each other through this? Um, and so marriage, I don't believe in marriage as far as a contract. Right. And shout out to everyone who does. It's That's okay. Right. It's okay to believe in it in that way. And the wedding dress and the rings and the, uh, the you know, the, the thing that says that if I own the house, you own the house too. And, you know, I everything I have, yeah, <laughs> everything I have is now yours. And I just don't, I don't stand, I will never ever stand for that. Right. You know, and Brother Shaq also agreed because he's had, this is his third marriage, third. but the only one that was like this. That's right. And so he knows all the ins and outs and all the paperwork needed to Ooh, yes. dissolve a contract with the U.S. government. That's right. So that's a, you know, that's a kind of it's something to share. It's, it's a <laughs> you little know? insight. And it's, not, it's nothing that we ever told anybody. As a matter of fact, we told people that, you know, I mean, I did. You know, because they, they have people that don't believe that you are really married unless... Or that you can uh, do that, right. That you can do that, right? <laughs> right. Or that, and also, like, that you can still be protected, too. Right. As if, if you put, you know, get your ducks in a row as far as um, life insurance and that kind of thing. Right. Um, and, and we're not talking common law married, married, right. married either. You know, we're talking about respect and honor for two human beings, two people That's without right. the U.S. government. That's right. You know, and as we talk about... Um, what the black nation looks like and what the mm -hmm. black nation does, that's a, you know, it's it's not a scapegoat. And usually it's like men being like, well, you know, I don't I don't really want to, I don't really right. want to, you know, right, men right. saying that and women like, uh-uh, I need a commitment. Right. I need, need this. I need this in paper. I need this in writing. Yeah, yeah um, kind of thing. This was, this was both of our thoughts. That, that's right. This is both of our thoughts that this is how it should be, you know, for us and and you know that's, that doesn't match with everybody. That's right. But this is this is how we're able to say, you know, that part of our relationship is um, is over. We've completed that. Yeah, we've completed, completed that, that cycle. And I, I wanted to. Um, I was thinking too, because I was thinking, yep, three times for me too, and to say that um, the the marriage concept and the contract and the agreement and the enforceable contract and the, as you talked about, the difficulty in dissolving it is, is intended to be because there's this thought that if in fact you are married in a way, which again, that's a, that's a contract, nothing more than a legal document is what a marriage actually is. If you can look that up by definition, it's, a, it's just a legal contract binding two people you know, legally that, that can be enforced. What that's what that's supposed to do is keep people from not dissolving it, from from saying, "Well, it doesn't matter, whatever, however you've grown or I've grown or how we see things differently now, we've got to stay together." You know, yada yada yada. And the interesting thing is, with with all of that happening and with that being understood in the way that in which people in America, just all people in America are socialized, 51% of marriages fail. 51%. Now that's not 100, but it's more than half. And so when you think about anything that you're going to do, you got a certain kind of feeling if you know it's, you got a less than a half a chance for it to actually work, that the data says. So I'm saying that there's data that suggests that this may or may not be uh, at, at least in the way that it is imposed, um, the ways, the normal ways that people be together, you know, and so, you know, I, I think we were, in fact, brave to say we're going to do this differently and allow ourselves to allow things to happen as they happen so that we can actually get here, you know, because there are people who are in marriages that feel in many ways they can't get out of them. They don't want to be together. They definitely decide, but then they can't seem to dissolve the marriage or get out of the marriage, if you know, I have to use that kind of language, or change their reality because of the other things that, you know, and so again, you know, looking at that as a, a brave choice and something that 
it can really be done. Like, you can really do that. <laughs> you know, two people out of respect each other, you can really do that. Yeah. So, yeah. and so as we are coming to the break, we want you to certainly hang on. Uh, again, this is True Love Movement Tuesdays. We glad to be here today talking about, you know, breaking up and the breakup and not being a couple and sustaining the work and, and many, many other things and more announcements to come on the other side of the break. So we want you to hang with us. I'm Brother Shaq. And Mama Fire. For True Love Movement Tuesdays. Wholeness. Wholeness. We'll see you on our side of the break, family. Everybody watching this live because I do think, on it too. You can check. Oh good. I think I think this is gonna be one of our kind of pinnacle shows. Um from California. Just because it's kind of grateful we could afford you know, shocking. I haven't told anybody except for very close people. Daniel from California. Just because people, Choosing whether to pay the rent or you know, fix the car to get people to don't understand, much you know, they want to, they want to say, now wait a minute, what? You and Brother Shank, y'all can't break up. The we can't. And we went from <laughs> like, to the why not? Why, why can't we? Oh, it's a shame. Oh, I don't feel so good. Two kids can eat. She doesn't feel so good today, but we, we hanging in there and giving thanks for for y'all patience, because I know it's kind of tough to hear her whine, but she's um she's getting teeth and that the weather change messing with her um chest, her lungs, her breathing. Um, you know, Yame is, is our our very special baby. Oh, check. Can you call Monica? Cause um we gotta give her a call to get in. Oh, and okay. my phone. Oh, that's right. But she's a very special one, in which we love tremendously. Um, and so, you know, I've been keeping her and watching her to help her family because they have to work, um, and I have the most flexible schedule. Um, you have to be very patient and careful with her. Um, and so we, we, you know, I feel very blessed to be one of her caregivers. Um, but as soon as we figure out which day and time that once um, everything is settled with the new owners and the new situation with WBOK, I will have a I will have somebody watch her so that I can get really into the the broadcast and into the the teach the teaching moment. So anyway, um, this is. This is our first real conversation about this, and so people are going to see, if they watch this, they're going to um, realize that we have broken up and, and, and that we're not getting back together. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, just what's happening, just what's up right now. The fact that we can continue to maintain integrity with one another, continue to ma maintain the truth, um, continue to be very reflective and who we are, and also continue to do great work. You know, I trust Brother Shag. I trust Brother Shag with True Love Movement's name. I trust Brother Shag to represent True Love Movement in the dynamic, brilliant way that he does. I trust, um, I trust him with my life. I trust him with my life. And so, you know, that none of that has changed. He's a good man, a good, and then I'm a good woman, you know, that this is not about one person being wrong. This is not about somebody cheating or somebody, you know, some wild stuff that happened. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Who's here? Mama, I see you. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> like where you been? <laughs> there we go. Ooh, love. Woo! You got your mama, Nana. Oh yeah. Oh my God. But Jack, you think you could help? Okay. Well, you said that um, she was going to say something about. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to she, she definitely for that. Oh, yeah. she's not feeling it. Yeah, what we'll do, we can give it to you from, from, from the top of the bridge. You know what I mean? We can give it to you. From the top of the bridge. Or you could walk with everybody back and just let her do her thing while she's doing it. Okay. And while that's happening, I can go take your keys and yeah, move my thing. Do I have the keys or do you? I gave them back to you. I said I can't believe he found that. He seems sorry. We very clearly told him not to look up there. I'm honestly impressed that he was able to do it. Pretty good balance on that big chair. Yeah, I mean. I guess he'll just know what his gifts are this year. I really thought we had it in the mall. If they can find their presence, they can find a gun. Yeah, yeah. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured. What did they, brother Jay? Oh, that was Brought to you by the Ad Council and Family Fire. Yes, we are. All right, sorry about that, Facebook family. My, um, Rodney, um, Yame's mama is going to come and talk a little bit about a Kendor is who in a minute, um, and she's coming to get Yame, so the last session, I can, um, the last hour, I can be more present, um, but she saw her mama and got very, started feeling a lot better, <laughs> which is good. You ready now? Yeah, you ready. I'm ready for you. You can come sit right here. <laughs> or we can switch here and sit here. It's all right, they know it's cool out there. <laughs> Hey, all right, all right. Welcome back to True Love Movement Tuesdays, and we have a special guest joining us in the studio today. Um, Iyame's mama, but she's so much more than that. Um, my beautiful sister Ranika, who is also known as a Kendor, is here to just talk a minute. While she's picking up Iyame, but just talk a minute about um, what she's got going on, a Kendor soup, as well as some other things that's happening just this week. What's up, my sister? Hey, hey, y'all. Hey, Facebook and the radio peoples. <laughs> I am so a Kendor. I am a Kendor, and what I have come up with, with the help of many people, um, is a Kendor soup. And what a Kendor soup is, is it's hard to describe because it's I I market it as a songwriting class. Let me start. A kendo is is kind of like a group therapy. So what happens is I'm a songwriter. So I write songs and I sing these songs that are about my life with a whole lot of feeling. And then I ask the people who come in a circle, what does the song bring up for you? And then, you know, our people, we need places and great places where we can be our genuine selves and talk. People just talk about all kind of life stories and life events. And, um, and then I choose the next song off of that. And it goes on and on and on. It's uh, Mama Grill from the... What'd you say? You want to be in the team? Mama Grill from the Tecrema Center um, got me a place at... Uh, at the Sanchez Center. So that's 1616. You know what I'm talking She like my hair. That's that black girl magic. So it's 1616 Catherine Avenue. And um, it's on Claiborne and, and uh, Catherine. And it's from 6 to 8. Tomorrow is my birthday. So I'll be bringing some cake this Thursday. I would love for you to come. Um, it's usually eight dollars, but if you come for my birthday, you can just come. And if you want to give me eight dollars or twenty or ten or fifty, you know I'll take it. Yes, okay. yes, you received um, that, my sister. <laughs> so you can find more information just by uh, 
Googling, YouTube, iTunes, Akendor, A-K-E-N-D-O-R. That's 24-7. That's uh, A-K-E-N-D-O-R, 24-7-365. So. All right. So tomorrow, no, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's your actual birthday. Thursday at the Sanchez Center. Kendor's Hoop starts at 6 o'clock, and it's at 1616 Catherine and Avenue. And it's her birthday. We're celebrating her birthday. So y'all should come on out and celebrate. Um, and, and know what Kendor's Hoop is all about. Know what it feels like. Know, you know, all the benefits of it. And so you can tell other people because this is a mission that Ranika's on. It's a mission, but it's also, like, um, very healing for, for her as well as for everybody involved. So thank you, my sister. Thank you. Yep. And thank y'all. Hope to see you there. All right. <laughs> you later, yummy. All right, Brother Jake, we ready for you? Okay. All right. Thank you, sis, for coming through. Thank y'all. Good, good, good. Fine, y'all help you feel better, baby. All right. Back on the air. Back on the air. So we were talking about, um, you know, the breakup. The breakup between <coughs> Brother Shake and I. You look about Jackie. No, I'm gonna take that down first. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna take that So, we started talking about the breakup um, that the Shaq and I are experiencing right now. And I wanna bring up counseling. Um, Brother Shaq and I did try counseling three years ago. Um, we had a very good, I know I, I started first, um, and I saw. Uh, my beautiful counselor, she'll always be my counselor. Right now, I'm not currently in counseling, but if I ever need counseling, or oh, trust me, this is who I'm going to. Shout out to um, uh, Ori Counseling Services, Ori, O-R-I, Counseling Services, because Chief uh, Sable, she was my counselor and always will be. And so I started off in counseling with her, and then Brother Shaq and I met with her as well. Together. No, I need you. I need you. Okay, I do. Um, yeah. And so, we, so this was three years ago that we decided to go to counseling. So Brother Shaq and I, we, we've been breaking up for, for all of 2019, but we've been breaking up for a while, you know, right. for some years. Um, and trying everything to stay together, trying everything to, to um, say it isn't so, you know, yeah. like really... Um, not go about breaking up. I think we even had a show called Baby in the Bathwater. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we and did. that was about like oh. not throwing out what actually works, but to throw out what maybe doesn't. Right. And so we've been struggling with this for, for some time. Um, we've been struggling with our relationship and how things would change and all of this for, for time, for some time. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, Counseling does work. Absolutely. It may not keep you together. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? It may not keep you together, but it it goes toward the best thing. Thank you for and saying that. And the best you. thing for everybody, you know? Thank uh, you. It doesn't matter if it do, if it doesn't quite a quote unquote keep you together. It doesn't mean that it's not working. That's right. And that it, that's what that's what working can look like. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly what working can look like. Um, and shout out to, uh, you know, Ranika for coming through. I'm actually going to assist her here in just a minute. So, and so, as she was saying, yes, counseling really does work. And what you end up getting is the truth. Or you're able to get to what's really real. And sometimes what you can get to tells you that, hey, this should this should continue. Uh, you know, let, letting, letting her in. Um, is so you know sometimes you know because sometimes when folk you know come to us and, and, and we're doing some work it's, it's this thought that the the best solution or the best thing is to to stay together regardless of what happens and, and that that's that's what you do and that's part of that that um the uh the allure of the quote-unquote marriage concept and they say you know until death do us part which is interesting which still says that you're going to you're going to part <laughs> it just somebody may die, but you're going to part. It, it it acknowledges that um you know people will not necessarily be together forever, and you know that's important too because it's a fact that something is going to end the relationship. 
Uh, and uh, we shouldn't be afraid of that. I, uh, of course, you know, Mama Fi had to step out to finish finish off tending to uh, Yami. And again, we appreciate all of our listeners and uh, our viewers, you know, for your patience through that process. Because as we've been very, you know, candid about that, is something that you know also needs to happen right now as this broadcast is happening. But um, I wanted to talk, and I'm, I'm sure she'll be back soon to to uh, you know contribute her perspective. This uh, the idea of why marriage and, and the the necessity for that whole for the whole concept of marriage, just with you know culturally with black people as we are, you know, today, right here, right now. And, and, you know, I had some thoughts about that as somebody who's had three marriages. You know, what is that about? And, and why don't I stop this foolishness? Of course, you know, I've stopped. But, you know, what is it about after the first time that told me, get back out there and, and do this again? Uh, and then after the second time, hey, man, get out there and do this again. Almost, you know, concurrently. And, you know, what I, I think that, and again, I'm waiting on um, Mama Fire with this because it's something that her and I have talked a lot about over the years, but it is the, um, you know, the, the loss. We, we didn't get deep, deep into this on, on Saturday for our grief, grief and loss group, but the, the idea of how black people have, quote unquote, lost so many people. Like we we lose people, and so for you to lose people, like if you lost money, you lost change, you lost time, and just say you had it, and our our thought about having people and what that's about, because I think that's real deep about the way that culturally we as black people say, you know, people are you for me, kind of a thing, and you belong to me, and just like you know, this is my shoes or my car or my jacket or what have you. Um, um, you know, like that whole belonging is one aspect and the whole my, the possession is another aspect. And I don't have a critique about our people about that. So that's not what I'm saying. But what I've gathered is about, you know, when I think, what is that about? The only place that I can think that that could originate would be on the plantation. Simply because we don't have any, there's been no time in the history of people who are today politically designated as black in America where we've been healthy. We've, there's been no quote unquote healthy relationship experience. And I'm not talking about intimate partner, I'm just saying any of it. Like we, we have to really look at the, the, the impact of, of the, the legacy of slavery on our ability to have healthy human relationships. And it really isn't there. And how could it be? We've, we've been dehumanized the whole time that we've been here, and that has persisted. So this, this my, my thoughts are, because we, quote unquote, had the ancestral experience of mothers and fathers and children being separated through, you know, being sold away, being killed, all these kinds of things, as, as we were able to get away from that, we decided the one thing we're going to do is make sure we hold on to people. Like, you got to hold on to people because people belong to you. And, you know, America gives us a, a, a structural thing in the way of marriage to do that. But, you know, even the history of marriage specifically with, with our enslaved African ancestors was not a, a legal thing that was honored or protected by law. It wasn't uh -oh. recognized. <laughs> That's where I was going. You know, I was talking about. I don't know if you could hear, but I was saying I had when I had thoughts on why we can, why I keep you know, had kept going out there after the first time, after the second time, but not after the third time, family, because because again that whole idea of belonging to someone and someone belonging to you and possessing somebody and someone possessing you and that being a thing, I think is something that has evolved that's maladaptive as a result of the legacy of slavery and how, you know, people, we quote unquote, lost people. Like we lost people, we lost family. And, and so now we're trying to reclaim things that we've lost, but people are really not things. But deep in, the, in, the, in our cultural psyche, 
this seems like that's what you do, and that's the pinnacle of, of having a, a respectable, unrespectful existence on a very social, socially constructed level for our people. And I'm only acknowledging not standing over there looking at our people and saying, oh, our people, I tell you, I'm saying, this is me. Me? That's right, this is us. <laughs> this is, this, is, this us. is us. It's like that movie, just like that movie, this is us. And, and realizing, you know, just kind of how deep it is. And this, again, we said, you said, and I, I, I'll just re, uh, re, reiterate, we are not saying that this is the way to do it and that people shouldn't be married and there's anything wrong. That's not what we're saying. We're just looking at our own truth and our own individual and collective truth and experiences and saying, at least in this time, we realized why we should no longer do this. And, and we are honoring that that's the true and true love movement. Yes. And so as people, because you were mentioning, you know, counseling and us, you know, going to counseling to that, that the, the goal is to get to the truth. Yes. Not to, you know, stay together at all costs because sometimes and some people at varying degrees shouldn't be together or shouldn't stay together. And this is the, the, the forces of the universe saying, stop. Stop right now. Stop, Stop writing your tracks. And That's re what it is. Reconvene, rebirth yourself, remember, re, mm -hmm. you know, take some time. And so all year long, we've been breaking up, but all year long, um, we've been talking about the transitions that are happening with True Love Movement. Right. And if people have been paying attention, which people do not, you know, people well, do really do not pay attention. I'm going to give them some credit, though. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any evidence. Because it's going to shock everybody. It's going to shock everybody. Well, okay. maybe not. But I mean, right. I think we've been talking about this all year long without being explicit. Right. <clears throat> and, and we wait until the last show of the year <laughs> to be explicit. But... True love moving fashion right there. Well, we had to be sure. <laughs> sure. We had to be sure. We had to try everything. That's right. We tried everything. Everything. You know, tried everything to keep something stuck together that is that, meant to be free. That had, yeah. Right? It's meant to be free. And and <clears throat> it does not change my level of love, my level of respect, my level of, um, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of Brother Shaq. I'm very right. proud of him. Likewise. I you know, like I told, I, I was saying this, you weren't in here, though. Right, right. <laughs> it was during the, during was the break. Okay. I'm saying that I, um, I, I still, you know, trust you with my life. Right still, on. you know, whether we're together romantically or not. That's right. He's a, a stand-up person, and so am I. That's right. And so am I. He trusts me with his. That's right. So all that we built, is not destroyed. Not at you know, all. it's just making a choice to do something, uh, make do something different for the 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 cause. You know, that's right. There, there's the cause, and then there's a f effect, and so we're gonna do something different to get a different result. That's right. That's right. And that's brave. And it's even more brave because we're telling you. Uh, yeah. You know, because I understand, as I said too, when some of the time you were out, uh, that um, you know. Having, you know, doing this in this way, at least we can say it and we can say it, you know, a minimal amount of times, but that I don't have to, you know, I said me personally, you know, this isn't the, the narrative, the story that I want to tell every day, <laughs> you yeah. know, I have, I'm experiencing it. And I mean, of course, there's some, there is some, some, a feeling, there is some feeling of loss, um, but that's part of the process. You know, you can't, you can't start something, stop something, and have no, no feeling about it. So, of course, but at the same time, you know, doing it this way is also therapeutic, I think. Mm -hmm. um, which, again, wasn't necessarily the, the plan, I, I can tell you. Uh, like many times uh, when we get on the air, uh, we've we've only just decided <laughs> what what it was going to be you know um and that's kind of the way it happens in a very organic way today was no different um so this is not contrived and it it's happening exactly the way uh we know that it should happen so so we would open up the lines i guess 504-260-9265 uh for True Love Movement Tuesdays today. We didn't really title the show. Um, I would like to 
you know, we did the show of The Art of Letting Go and, and what have you. This isn't, isn't that show. This is a deeper dive on that show. Yeah. Um, definitely. But um, essentially what we're talking about is what's different leaving 2019, what's, what's remaining, and then we can spend, you know, some time talking about a lot of the exciting projects and things that are happening for 2020. Because again, we, as I said, you know, we're leveling up here as opposed to, you know, this being this very sad and solemn occasion, we're actually leveling up. So there's a lot of excitement um, that's happening, that's there. And so, you know, I hear that, um, that late bloomer. Oh, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> I hear that late bloomer is, uh, is, is pushing along real nice uh you know yeah it is finally let's let's talk about that a little bit yeah i feel like i've been in birth uh, in in pregnant and in labor with lay bloomer for the last year mm -hmm. and and i'm so glad i didn't rush it i'm really glad i didn't rush it i'm working with the right people and and you know shout out to embassy studios that was the right foundation that's right for it but it needed a touch that um, I found, you know, right. over time as in searching for, you know, support with it. Um, and it's just time I'm ready to let it go so I can make room for other projects to come. Mm -hmm. But I'm proud of it. I'm so proud of it. When I listen to, to it from start to finish, from track to track, it tells a beautiful story. Um, a story that really um, is important to share right now but also for it to move along to make room for, for the newest stories to be told. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, you know, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more after this show, trying to figure out um, timing, the timing for it, and, and if we'll have, like, a listening party or uh -huh. an album release party. You know, everybody's like, oh, no, we need a, we need a party because this, this, we've been waiting on it, too. Right. You know, people have been waiting on it. Man, I, I was, they blew it for nothing. When I walk in a place and somebody's like, no, where the album at? That's what That's I right. want to know. Is the album still coming out? And it's, it's a little heartbreaking because it's like, you know, this year I've been talking about my word being impeccable. Yeah. You know, been been trying uh, to, to really teach by example with my word being impeccable. Mm -hmm. But it's really tough when it's just not ready. Well, then your word's still impeccable, though. Yeah. You know, let me say this, that it, it took the time it needed. <laughs> is what yeah. I know, you know. So, yes, Late Bloom was coming out, right um, as well as the expansion of True Love Movement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, True Love Movement is expanding beyond one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one counseling services. Right on. And the universe has been leading us to this, and we've been kind of coming along, you know, fighting it a little yeah. bit. But it's we can't I, fight it anymore. <laughs> I've been fighting. We can't fight it Trying anymore. To stay one no, way. we right. can't just stay one way. It's time for True Love Movement to expand. That's right. And in a massive way, in That's a global right. way. Um, that the message of True Love Movement is not just here in New Orleans. It's not just, you know, here in the South. Uh -huh. That it's here in the country and it's here all over the planet. That's right. And so true twenty twenty will be the ushering into you know, into this expansion of True Love Movement. And the, the, the services that we do offer to the globe, to the world, to the planet. The whole planet, you Yeah, so um, that resolving rape culture is another resolving thing. Resolving rape culture that is, is finally sentences making away. It, it's, it's making sentences it's, away, fam. It's birth, yeah. you know. Um, another very long project. You know? A long project, but a, 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 a needed project to tell a story that needed the, its time. It needed its time to, to, to grow and to come out ready ready for the world that's right ready to teach <clears throat> and all those things we've been talking about resolving rape culture coming out all year long we have <laughs> just like late bloomer yes and, and, and i would say it's probably the case for for late bloomer but i'll you'd have to say that but at least i can say for if it is but i can say for resolving rape culture that this experience was part of what had to happen to complete the book this experience, this lived experience... Of us breaking up? Of us, yeah. Of us not being a couple, hmm. I think, has has enriched the writing in a way that, that gives it gives it something it didn't have before. And, wow. And, and I'm, I'm saying that uh, because it's really, it is really good. 
But I'm saying that because I'm, I want, again, for folks to, to, uh, to think about how you perceive a thing and then what it really, really is and how sometimes there's a, there's a little bit of distance in that. How you perceive the thing. So if you perceive that, oh, this is so sad, you know, like we were saying it on the Facebook Live and had some, you know, some of the sad faces that, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're breaking up and they're not a they couple. They had this sad so, faces? They had some sad faces. Aww. It's, like, it's like, this is so sad. And, and then, yes, perhaps there's a moment, there is some sadness. And, though, there's like all these other beautiful things that are going to happen as a result. Yes. And that are still happening and that they, they had already been kind of set in motion in this this. This thing is a, just a piece of it. This isn't the whole thing, but this is a piece, of, and it's a necessary part of it. But being able to to have a paradigm shift to look at something from that particular lens that is important because you know I think I, I don't know if I, I told it on the air, but there, there's this story, this recurring story. I think I did the last show we did, and I was talking about who knows what's good or bad. Yes. You know what I'm saying, like. Something can look like, oh, this is horrible, and then the next day, it's like, man, I'm glad that happened because da 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 and had that not happened, then this wouldn't have happened. And, and so, like, again, we have to trust. We really do have to trust, trust the universe the and yeah. trust the process that what is happening is happening as it should happen Yes. in the time that it should happen for reasons that are beyond our comprehension, perhaps, in the moment. And all we have to do is what you've been saying for um at least all of 2019, but even maybe 2018 too is is because it's been so long, so it just runs together for me. Just keep going. Just keep going. And this is this is advice for everyone. Just keep going. Just Regardless how keep it looks. going. And you know my mantra. I've decided every year I do a mantra, and my mantra for 2020 is teach by example. Right. I'm tired of teaching, and it's not that I don't teach by example, but I'm tired of saying the things to sisters for them to understand. Um, and do for themselves. No, just watch me. Right. Just watch me. That's you, pretty bold. That's bold. Like that's it. bold. Like just it. watch me. Watch me not tell a lie. Watch me show integrity. Watch my word be impeccable. Watch, you know, me be a queen. Watch what I do in my relationships when they're not working. Watch how I break up. Watch, you know what I'm saying? Because you can tell a sister all day long, mm -hmm. but it's so much easier to say, do as I say and not as I do. That's right. Just do as I do. That's right. If you want the same results. Right. And if not, do as you do. <laughs> you know right, what I'm saying? Right. As your higher self, do as you do. I'm teaching by example. Right. Watch. Just watch. And and I don't mean that in a way like, girl, you just do what I do and you're going to get the same results. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be an example of wellness. That's right. Of wellness, of what it, what it means for a black woman to be well. And it's not always pretty. Right. It's not always pretty. I am tired of being in a box of Mama Fire. I'm right. tired of being in that box because people say, oh, oh, Mama Fire would never do that. Right. How do you know what Mama Fire is going to do? Right. How do you know what Ayana's going to do? Right. And that's the truth. The truth of the matter is, Mama Fire is only one part of who I am, who I really am. Mm -hmm. And that's why the album is important, because I talk about myself in three people, album. in three persons. Right. I talk about Beautiful Flower, I talk about Mama Fire, well, really Fire and Mama Wisdom, these three mm -hmm. with divine people that make up Ayana, you know, that make up this, this complex person with multi-facets and so you know mama fire in the box is you know she's a a, a mother she's a wife she's mm -hmm. this you know perfect servant per she's a servant mm -hmm. and she you know she's a perfect you know this and that stop looking at me that way look at me i'm a woman i'm mm -hmm. a woman i'm a human being that's enough that's enough and i'm only one aspect of a woman and one aspect of a human being Right. You know, I am not the pinnacle of womanhood, the pinnacle of humanness. I'm not Mother Teresa. I'm a woman. I am a woman. And so that, that for 2020, I'm teaching by example of black womanhood. There you go. Right? And it can look so many different ways. It can be smart. It can be brilliant. It can be tough. But it can also be soft. It can be sensual and sexual. Mm -hmm. It can be um, sassy. You know, it can be loving and nurturing. 
It can be all those things. And all you know, as long as I am not hurting myself or anybody else, it's good enough. That's right. It's good enough. And so I'm breaking free from a lot of ways that I'm looked at and the ways that I'm boxed in. Mm -hmm. You know, but check, I'm not sure about you, but I know I'm not entering into 2020 in nobody's box. That's right. Well, no, I've not been in the box. I, well, I, I take that back. I have tried to um, to put myself and to stay in the, the box. The box is a safe place, particularly for a black man, uh, because there's so many ways that the black man could go wrong in terms of perception. Uh, and so, you know, the, the idea of being married and being a married man has been a big part of that box mm, yes. for me personally. That's why, you know, three times around with it, uh, and the and the 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 drive to want to be a, a good husband, you know, a good father, a good, you know, a good man. And, you know, and then realizing that I, I don't have to be married to be a good man. Um That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like I do not have to be a married man to be a good man that a, a an unmarried man isn't the opposite <laughs> of a good man. That's right. You know, and then and then embracing that, and then accepting that that's always really been the truth. But again, it, it you know takes three times. It takes you know twenty four years or so, or however long I've been at it to to like say, oh, so I'm not supposed to be doing that. Got it. Now is Jazz? Did we have a call? Okay. Um, and so you know I'm not supposed to be doing that. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, again, if we are, if we will look at the truth, be truthful, for real, for real, mm. that the, you know, our life experience will tell us what we're supposed to do, and what ends up happening is, we are more concerned with what other people will say and think about us, than honoring our own truth. Yes. And, oh boy. And we, you know, we conditioned for to to get Stop the approval. Me. All twenty twenty yeah. out of here. That caring what other people think, we cannot be hold, held to that and ac accountable for what other people are thinking about us. It's none of our business. It's none of our business. Yeah. We just stand tall and stand true to who we really are, and all of that will melt away because it's not a it's not important. Well, it's not important to. if we're we're lining up with who we really are. Right. And it's you know, um, it's hard to do. It's really, really That's hard to work. do. That's yeah. the work. Yeah. That's the work, family. But you know, you know, we signed up to do it the the the, the truth. And it's doable for for other folk, but as you said, you know, watch you, and I, I would say watch us, you know. I mean, watch us, that's right. You know, I, I, can, I think that applies that uh, part of part of the process of uh, breaking free from the boxes and expectations of other people and really honoring yourself and your truth and evolving, you know, it, it is a lengthy process that isn't rewarding. It's not rewarded outwardly in any kind of way. Is that is that is that fair to say that it's yeah. just not it's not rewarded quote unquote from the world, the but, world yeah. it, it's not rewarded and so it's it doesn't seem to be incentivized and that's part of the reason why people will be dishonest, why people will do things that their spirit tells them not to do or you've done enough and because of the 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 acceptance part of the reward part but. I don't know, man. I mean, this is this is you know kind of re-energized me and also taught me again a lesson that I apparently didn't learn before that <laughs> what other people it just doesn't matter. Like it really, it really doesn't matter. But I will say this: I've heard that. I think you've heard that. I think our, our listeners and viewers have heard it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people say. Matter of fact, the first time I think I heard that, I was my mama was telling me. I was a little boy. I was, was small. It's a message that we get, but you have to live a, a certain amount of life mm -hmm. to really internalize what that really means. Because it sounds real superficial, like you're playing defense. Like, well, I don't care what you say, blah blah blah. But you know, it's it's a little but more than do. that. You do. You do. You know, you do. And then parents instill that in you that. Don't care about what anybody says but me. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I say, though. Um, and then I got caught up in worrying about what my children would think. I think yeah. that was the last thing that I had to to kind of dis you know, dis 
disconnect from. It's like my children. And think about it is if I did my job, my children know who I am. That's and right. if I if I don't, they'll eventually know who I am. You right. know, if I didn't, if they don't, they eventually know who I am. And 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 you know, there's a song that I created as I was going through this. So remember, Brother Shaq and I have been breaking off for the whole year. So yeah. it's been up and down and, and a lot of crying, a lot of talking, a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, figuring things out and all these things. And so, um, I, I came up with a song because what I do is I freestyle for self-care. You know, when I need it, I go spend time alone and I just, I, I, my spirit talks to me and I make them into songs and be that woman. Oh, I, yeah. I, yeah, be that yeah. woman. I wrote that in July uh, before my birthday and I finally had a chance to kind of deliver it to the world mm -hmm. and, and really that's when everything that's when everything became completely apparent and the first verse the first verse says you know as up and down it goes mama knows mama knows that you're supposed to be in the box but the box drops and all the walls tumble down and it says i know how to wear my crown i know how to hold it down now it's time to hold it up don't give up it and just be you know so you you're gonna you're gonna do self work. You're gonna start off doing self work. You're gonna be journaling, and you're gonna be doing all this self work. And when do, what is it gonna take you? It's gonna take you outside of the box. <laughs> that's where it, that's where you're going. Right. You're going outside of the box, and you're going to a point where you don't care anymore what anybody else thinks because you know who you are. You know I'll who see. you are. And then once you get there, then you start moving to a whole different place, to a whole different understanding of yourself, mm -hmm. to a whole different understanding of life, of what life is and what life is here for. Right. You are here to live your greatest existence. You are here to live your life in your full glory and your full shine. That's why you are here. Right. You are not here to worry about what everybody's thinking. You are not here to worry about what your hair looks like and what your shoes, what kind of shoes you have on and what kind of clothes you have on. And I'm not trying to, to be like that. But understand you're able to gauge how how far you are in this life with what you uh, find important. That's right. With what you find important, whatever you find important, you're able to understand where you are That's right. in life. What I find important is integrity, is truth, is honoring who I really am. And so whether that blows somebody's mind or not, it doesn't have anything to do with me. This is just what I have to do because I'm ready to sit on the throne of the ancestors. When it's time for me to go, I want to say that I gave my all. I gave 100% right. and I did what I needed to do for myself, no matter how hard it was. That's right. Do you think it's not hard to be with this man, to be his wife? Not It's very hard not to be with him. It's so much easier just to be with him because he's the type of man that will take care of you in every single way. But that's not what I need to sharpen myself. That's not what I need. Does that make sense? That you're able to choose something that even though it's hard, you know it's the I right it anyway. thing. You know it's the right thing for your own growth, for your own um, navigation to free. Mm -hmm. We talk about navigation to free all yeah. the time, Brother Shay. Yeah. I'm navigating to free, my right people. On. Please, watch me. Right. You know, that's, that was inspirational, family. You got to say we got the Facebook Live family. Got all kinds of hearts and stuff up there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that's got to be inspirational. If you, if you were listening to, you know, what you were saying, you were describing in great detail the process of self-love. Yes. See, when people always ask, you know, they ask you, well, how do you do that? What is that? I mean, how do you love yourself? That sounds, that's what it looks like. And see, that's why we've said all along that this this work right here is not for people. It's not easy. People. Ooh, you, you it's have messy. To, it's not pretty and it's not neat having to confront the truth of yourself, but it's your truth and it's yourself. And, you know, you with yourself 24 hours a day. So you, you have to be the one that is totally good with that and that's the, and you're the only one that needs to be so i appreciate you saying that and, and laying that out like that for for the folks who are watching again if you like true love movement on facebook you can catch the live show if you're just tuning in you can go back and see um you know what you missed because you missed i think you missed something if you just tuned in 
Um, you missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but shout, you missed Yummy. You missed yeah, the Kindor. You missed everything. Yes. <laughs> but shout out to you know all of our folks who have been hanging tough with True Love Movement and everybody who is uh, listening and watching and will share the show and everybody who's commented. Um, I do apologize because I did say, Mama Fi, that I would do my best to respond to comments in real time. And what you're seeing is me doing my best. I haven't responded to one uh, because that <laughs> I'm doing my best, and I just can't. I can't do both of them, although I desire to. So I wanted to give you all that that little bit of uh, of truth and honesty. And I, I also wanted to uh, kind of reinforce what you were saying about you know, doing your own work and doing it, the truth in other people, it doesn't really matter, you know, what other people say, because this is something you have to do for you. Have to. This is something that we all have to do. It's a must do. For ourselves. And when you honor yourself, and as you had said, again, fortunately, we've got so many years together. It runs, they run together. It's just been one, you know, nice, beautiful, long period of time. But... You love you love yourself the most. This yes. is what loving yourself the most looks like. You know, yeah. so 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 much of what we talk about, this is doing it. Like this is actually doing it. And I want to. I really really want to stress that because we understand and appreciate. I can say it collectively, we appreciate the way that people trust. You know, true love movement. And yeah. this is why you do trust true love movement. You trust true love movement because we'll do the truth. We'll tell the truth. Yes. Even this truth. We'll tell this truth and do this truth and say, watch. That's why. That's what makes True Love Movement very, very different than what other folks are, are talking about or, the, or a lot of the um, the superficial, you, you got to love yourself talk. You know what I mean? Like loving yourself looks many ways, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you owe it to yourself to express them all. So, you know, as as we are, you know, winding down this still fast two hours, even with the Yami, even with the Kendo, even, you know, it's still been a, a pretty fast two hours. Um, we want to give some more uh, information about upcoming projects. We started off talking about Late Bloomer as you're getting close. Yes. Um, we t then we talked about resolving rape culture, which close, I mean, literally sentences away, sentences away. And I'm telling you, it's really good. And I wouldn't have said that because I wouldn't have said that from the beginning because this, that book, the reason it took so long, that's another example. It, 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 and I'll talk more about that during the book release, but it began as something that was really superficial, not really mm. superficial, but a little bit transactional. Mm -hmm. And... Because it, it, that superficial is wrong, but I and I wasn't really trying to go that deep. I wanted to keep it kind of intellectual and kind of talk about it from a distance. Mm. But what the book, what it wouldn't let me do in the process of it, it wouldn't let me stay there. I couldn't really do it without really getting in it. And man, once I got in it, oh man, you know, and that's what has taken so long because I'm I've been saying that I've been working on this book. But this book has been working on me. Yes, come on, Brother Shaq. That's really what's been happening, and that's why it's taken so long, and and it's tested me and tried me in ways that I didn't, I didn't think were possible and I also didn't expect. And in many cases, I really didn't appreciate in the moment it was happening. You know, now that some time has passed and I've, you know, folded into it uh, in a different way, I'm grateful for it, and I'm very proud of it, and I'll certainly stand proudly behind it. And I also just wanted to say that there will be more workshops. We've done a few, but there will be more workshops coming up throughout the year. Yes. Resolving Rape Culture workshops mm -hmm. and as the book is released. And, they're, you know, uh, it, that is important work. And we want folks who are really serious about doing some transformational work. Uh, you know, you may think that it's a, around... Uh, black women, but this really is going to bring you face to face with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, All good books do. Right. 
Yeah, so Resolving Rape Culture Workshops, as well as other workshops, we will continue having a partnership with Takrema, Center uh-huh. for Art and Culture. Once a month, True Love Movement will be providing community healing and support groups right. um, on very unique subjects, um, subject matters that we know that our people um, need an understanding about. Yeah. And also, if you have any thoughts about what you know, could community needs to talk about and needs to right. um, learn about, we're open for that too. So once a month in 2020, we will be providing the community healing and support groups. Whether, whether you know, we're, we're deciding to keep that tethered to the New Orleans community, to, to right. what's going on in New Orleans. Because as we venture outside of New Orleans um, and outside of the country, you know, out, just, just outside of our comfort zone, we are deciding to always be able to provide that for New Orleans, but also outside of New Orleans too. Like That's right. for those who are listening, we have listeners in New York. Um, you know, shout out to Get, our, our brother that always yeah. calls in from New York. We are ready. We are we are ready and willing to travel DC, where we need Baltimore, to go um, to give this understanding of what true love movement is. What has been injected into my heart and spirit and soul right now is the fact that this is a mass movement. This right. is not just a movement in New Orleans. This is a, this is a massive movement, and um, for the decade from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty thirty, that's what we're that's what we're growing. That's right, and and we want to acknowledge that too. And I think there's there's some kind of a, I don't know if it's biblical or it's uh, some other religious thing, but I don't know. There's something about something about being respected or honored in your own house or something like that and, and oh. you know what I'm saying and you know the one I'm talking about I think so yeah and it, so what, we, what, what we're also acknowledging is that there is there's some resistance we recognize there is some resistance um, from New Orleans from New Orleans you know? why why is that the case <laughs> why I'm from New Orleans Brother Shaq from New Orleans we've been doing so many blood sweat and tears work in New Orleans That's and right. we still don't get the love and support we should you know but and um, that doesn't matter. Right, right. <laughs> it doesn't that, matter anymore. That doesn't that doesn't stop what's going to happen going forward. But yeah. we would still, we we you know think so much and so you know so think highly of our people. So that's why we're saying this to say, hey, listen, you know, give us a give us another look. You know, like go in and, and see, look back at some of the. Um, you know, some of the old True Love Movement Hour shows on the True Love Movement Hour page. Look at some of the YouTube videos from many years ago. Think back to like 2013 when we first got on the air. We've been talking about this and doing this kind of thing, you know, consistently every week since then. Yes. And, and I mean, we've been doing it away from radio and outside of, you know, the, the, the mass media view, but... What we're saying is we've really been, there's been a lot of fidelity with what we've been doing and that we didn't just start and we didn't just come out of a bag of talking about some self-love and you got to love yourself and, come on, brother you know, self-care and all this other stuff. I ain't knocking nobody who's doing that. I'm just saying that when people were afraid to talk about, when people would say things like, you know, they would whisper or they would point to their hand or, or whatever the case was. You know, we were doing that boldly, you know, boldly, before always. it was cool or fashionable or popular. And we made it fashionable. We made oh, it. Know. Yeah. I mean, and, and so let me say this, that, um, you know, we, we it pro, time will prove it. Time will yeah. prove it all. And we're not in it. You know, what I find, like, people want to be life coaches. They want to do all this thing so they can get notoriety and, right. like, um profit and that's never been what we've ever been that's never been our goal god no it's always been to heal you know to 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 talk about like the potential the good news that you can be healed black nation that's right that's all it's been about and yes we need to be able to live and take care of our family but you know it's that's never been the goal this is a actual um this has been i've been anointed with this thing with true love movement this is real and I don't care who believes it or doesn't believe it. Right. I know it's real. I know how it came to be. And I know in order to continue doing it, when I'm when I'm with the Yami, that is true love movement. Yeah. 
you know, the fact that I'm communal living with her mama and some other people, that is true love movement. It's an everyday thing. It's an everyday mindset. When I sit with my sister today, I sat with one of my sisters who had, who, who just had a death in her family. And we sat and we cried together. Both of us. That is true love movement. You know, this is not just a game. This is not a game. This is not a gain. This is a mission that I'm on, and I ask Brother Shaq to come along with me. There's a lot wow. of sacrifices that take place here and, and in order for our people to move. That's right. This is a movement for our people to move from um, sick to well, mm -hmm. from insane to sane. That's right. From broken-minded to healthy-minded, from low to risen. Right. Like, that, that is, that's what the goal is, and, and everything else is going to fall by the wayside that's about BS. Yep. You know, and about a notoriety. You know, this is not about that. This is about, mm -hmm. you know, and, I, and, and that's, a, you know, I don't need to preach or anything, but just, just to let you know, this has not stopped anything. This is, this matter of fact, this breakup between, between Brother Shaq and I is making everything stronger. It's making us stronger because so. we've been distracted by our relationship. We've been Look distracted of, yeah. And, and I had to learn that I'm not the, I'm not the relationship kind. Right. And and that's me taking my 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 you know, looking in the mirror and being real about who I am and who I've been. Right. Who my patterns have shown me this thing. Mm -hmm. And so it, this is what make us very so much more focused, you know, so right. much more, you know, uh ready to do the work that doesn't have anything to do about you know, about me and you. You know right. what I'm saying? That's right. So it's a good thing. It's a good Leveling thing. Up. It's a beautiful thing. Leveling up. Definitely. Definitely. Shout out to Tracy Elizabeth. She's so, so supportive. She's on we it. love you, Tracy. We want you to feel good, my sister, with all the change in the weather. We just love you, love you, love you. I also want to talk about, okay, so Akendor's Hoop, uh -huh. uh, Akendor's birthday is coming up. On on Thursday, Akendor Hoop is from 6 to 8. There's another burlesque show that's happening at Cafe Istanbul. Um, what did you, the, I think I'll call them the Sparkling Diamonds. Okay. Some of my sisters are in it. I'm so proud of them. They've been really done, doing a good job of marketing this show that's happening on Thursday. Right on. Then our uh, artist development that's been happening for the last 10 years uh -huh. with Xavier Molina in Beta Wave. Yeah. He will have a show on Friday over right. at Howlin' Wolf starting at 9 o'clock. I need everybody there to support Xavier because Xavier is our bright and shiny brother. brother and he is blowing up. So if you want to witness the blow up of this young brother, then you need to come and be present and take pictures and have history and post things because, you know, He's a very special shining star that's, that's coming right. for the music scene in the world. So, that's right. and then um, what's that after that? I think that's it for now for the rest of this year. Right. We're winding down. I know I'm winding down um, yeah. next week for some self care and getting ready for 2020. Oh, um, Saturday is Winter Solstice. That's right. So we want to encourage our people for this last Winter Solstice of the decade to do something special for yourself. That's right. Um, in remembrance of what you know what's got to die off mm -hmm. what has got to die off for other things to grow when spring uh spring equinox comes along that's right um so yes that's Saturday. what i want to share also kwanzaa kwanzaa's coming up and true love movement has done something for kuumba for the last couple of years and so um I'm coming, I'm going to speak to the children and do something special for the children on Kuumba, which is December 31st. Um, it's going to be a community book center. I'll, I'll send out more information. Please, please stay, stay tuned to um, truelovemovement.com as well as True Love Movement on Facebook and on Instagram right on. about how True Love Movement is presenting Kuumba for the children um, at community book center. So if you have a child ages zero, even the little babies, zero through nine, because what the Most High has put on my heart is that we need to do something for the children, right. social, emotional, and behavioral for our children. And so um, Iyame has helped me develop characteriz characterizations mm -hmm. that help mm -hmm. um, teach social, emotional, and behavioral development for black children. And so stay tuned for that um, as well. Anything at a Resolve and Rape Culture, yep. Rape Culture book, Late Bloomer album. Yep. Yeah, we, we start in 20, 2020 off with a bang. So stay tuned. Stay tuned, family. And, and you can catch all of that and more 
by liking True Love Movement on Facebook. That's right. Uh, following True Love Movement on Instagram. Yes. Uh, YouTube. The YouTube channel is, is True Love Movement on YouTube. Uh, like that, subscribe, catch the new videos, look at some of the old videos to see where we've been. That, that'll tell you a little bit about where we're going. And, and on this particular show, as it is a, a, a monumental show in that we had, again, if you are tuning in late, we have, uh, we have ended our relationship as a couple, but certainly continued full speed ahead with True Love Movement's work. Yes. Um, you know, we talk a, a lot about that. We're going to put this one up and, you know, share this with, with people you respect, people who know us, people who are getting to know us, so they can understand the the present and future direction of, of, of what True Love Movement really is and what it's always been. And so, you know, again, we're so grateful for you all tuning in and joining us live today, this December 17th, 2019, my grandmother's born day. She's an ancestor. Rising, Rising power, power, daughter, love. We love you, queen. And, uh, you know, with that, I'm Brother Shaq. And Mama Fire. For True Love Movement Tuesdays. Hold this. We still believe in wholeness, my people. That's right. Mind, body, spirit, alignment. Yeah, you <sighs>